Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed, or Harbour Boxed. It's pretty funny, in the last video I said exactly that, and the YouTube auto caption said Harbour Boxed both times. So, I guess YouTube wants to rename the channel to Harbour Boxed. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. Today, we are re-reviewing a product that I'd kind of hoped I was done reviewing. I I'd covered it enough initially, I was just hoping I was done with it, and I'm willing to bet many of you felt the same way. So, if you haven't heard, the mighty GeForce GTX 1650 has received an upgrade. This bad boy now comes complete with GDDR6 memory. Though, just by looking at the box, you'd be forgiven for not noticing the change. Basically, NVIDIA says the GDDR5 memory supply is drying up. And that means if they want to keep moving their plucky little TU117 dies, they need the GTX 1650 to adopt GDDR6 memory. And hey, it is a lot better than just slapping some desktop DDR memory on there and calling it a day. Hmm? Yes, yeah, so I'm pleased there. We're not seeing a repeat of the GT1030 DDR4 fiasco. Actually, what NVIDIA's done here is surprisingly consumer friendly. Basically, for the same $150 US MSRP, the GTX 1650 now gets 12 gigabits per second GDDR6 memory. Granted, it's unlikely that'll make the GTX 1650 a good buy, given that the 1650 Super still costs just $10 more, but I thought we might as well check it out anyway. Interestingly, NVIDIA has opted to reduce the core clock frequency for the GDDR6 version, lowering the operating frequency of the 896 CUDA cores by 4.5%. Still, those cores now have 50% more memory bandwidth to play with, so we're still expecting a net gain here. In fact, the WinForce OC, GDDR5 and GDDR6 models that I have on hand from Gigabyte both operate at an advertised core clock boost frequency of 1710 MHz, so the key difference in this test will be the memory bandwidth. The test system used includes a Core i9 1900K clock to 5 GHz with 16 GB of DDR4-3400 memory, and the exact graphics card models used for testing can be found in the video description. Finally, we have 12 games to look at, and all have been tested at 1080p using the medium to high quality presets or settings. So let's get to the results. First up, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and previously we found that the GTX 1650 was good for just 52 FPS, and that made it slower than even the 3 GB GTX 1060. Some might claim that a 33% boost over the GTX 1050 Ti is a good result, particularly given the MSRP of the newer part has only increased by 7%. I, on the other hand, would argue that this kind of improvement after a little over three years is pretty weak. But the real issue was the RX 570. Yes, the GTX 1650 is much more power efficient, but the RX 570s generally cost a little bit less and offer significantly more performance. And that basically saw the GTX 1650 dead on arrival. Here we see the RX 570 delivering a little over 20% more performance. Now, here we see the new GDDR6 model delivering a 13% performance uplift, and while that doesn't quite see it match the RX 570, I'd say it's now close enough. However, in this particular title, the RX 570 really isn't the issue, rather it's the GTX 1650 Super, which was a further 24% faster than the new GDDR6 1650. At just $10 more for the Super version, I think you know which one offers the most value in this title. Interestingly, we do see very little in the way of extra frames being rendered in Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Here the GDDR6 model was just 5% faster, which means while it is now able to match the 3GB GTX 1060, it is still a good bit slower than the RX 570 and miles slower than the GTX 1650 Super. In fact, for just $10 more, the Super version was a little over 40% faster. The performance gains seen in Assassin's Creed Odyssey are a little more significant, and here the GDDR6 version offered a 10% performance uplift, and that was enough to edge out the RX 570. So great news when compared to the AMD competition, but less impressive when compared to Nvidia's own GTX 1650 Super, which was still about 16% faster. World of Tanks saw a healthy 12% boost to the average frame rate, though the 1% low performance wasn't really improved upon. So. That's a little disappointing to see. Still, this placed the GDDR6 version of the GTX 1650 on par with the RX 570, but once again, it is worth noting that the 1650 Super was still 22% faster. 
Interestingly, Far Cry New Dawn is yet another title where we don't see much of an improvement to the 1% low result, despite a reasonably large increase in average frame rate performance. This could be a memory buffer capacity issue, though I wouldn't have thought so given we are using the high quality settings and not the ultra settings. Anyway, the GDDR6 model was 12% faster when looking at the average frame rate, and that placed it on par with the 3GB GTX 1060, but still 7% slower than the RX 570. Testing with Rainbow Six Siege sees just an 8% increase in performance with the GDDR6 model, and again that places it roughly on par with the 3GB GTX 1060, though here the 1% low performance was substantially better, as the 3GB buffer really does hinder the GTX 1060 quite a bit. Still, despite the much needed boost, the RX 570 is still faster, and the GTX 1650 was almost 30% faster. Another decent performance game was seen when testing with Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. This time we're looking at an 11% boost to the average frame rate. Still, it has to be said in the grand scheme of things, that's not really an amazing improvement, given the RX 570 was still a few frames faster. And then if you go and dish out an extra $10, that'll net you a 26% performance boost with the 1650 Super. And here we have another example in Battlefield 5 where the GDDR6 version of the GTX 1650 is only able to match the 3 GB GTX 1060. It's really a situation where it's just coming from so far back that a 10% improvement is virtually worthless. And further illustrating that point is the RX 570 providing 15% more performance with 75 FPS on average. Moving on to Metro Exodus, and here we see a 12% performance boost courtesy of that upgraded GDDR6 memory. And again, this allowed the GTX 1650 to match the GTX 1063 GB. However, in this title, the RX 570 was still 18% faster, and that's no small margin. The second last game tested is F1 2019, and here we see a 13% performance boost. So that is one of the bigger gains we've seen so far, though in modern games, low double digit gains seem to be what you can expect. And we see that's also true for Gears 5, where the GDDR6 model boosted the GTX 1650's performance by 12%. Again, while that is a nice bump for the same $150 US MSRP, it's also somewhat meaningless given the RX 570 and GTX 1650 Super still exist. And this really does highlight just how crap the original GTX 1650 was and still is. Just quickly, here's a look at power consumption. The GDDR6 model only sucked down a few extra watts, which was to be expected. Here we're looking at under 200 watts for the entire system when gaming, so quite a bit less when compared to something like the RX 570, though both will have loads of headroom using a 350 watt power supply. And remember, this system that you're looking at here has been powered by a Core i9 9900K overclocked to five gigahertz. So if you're using a more mid-range processor, power consumption is going to be even lower. Wrapping up the testing, here's a look at the cost per frame data, and for the most part, I'm just gonna use the MSRP as pricing and availability. That can be a bit wonky right now. So using the MSRP, as you can see, the GTX 1650 still looks a bit lost. The GDDR6 model is certainly worlds better in terms of value, rubbing shoulders with the RX 590, 580, GTX 1660 Super, and the new RX 5500, or at least the eight gigabyte version. I should clarify that I mean it's on par in terms of cost per frame. When it comes to actual performance, those GPUs are simply in another class. For the GTX 1650 to be in the correct performance tier, it should be coming in at well under $2 per frame. Basically, it should be below the RX 570, which would make it the best GPU here in terms of cost per frame, and that would make sense given it's by far the slowest. The original GTX 1650 though, what can you say? It still amazes me to this day that I get people coming in and attacking our original review where we claimed it was a pointless product. That's right, even to this day, people are still defending the GTX 1650, claiming we don't understand the product. And I understand it all right, it's a terrible buy, and I think this graph really says it all. So there you have it, Nvidia's most useless and pointless Turing-based GPU has been made slightly less useless. Based on our testing, the new GDDR6 model is about 11% faster on average, though we saw gains as small as 5%. For the older or less demanding titles, you're probably looking at gains on the lower end of the scale, but for the newer titles, particularly those that are memory demanding, you'll see a little over a 10% performance boost. Of course, as I've quite plainly said a number of times now, 
even a boost of 11% on average, it just isn't enough to make the GTX 1650 relevant at the $150 US price point. As it stands, the Radeon RX 570 is still a further 10% faster than the new GDDR6 version of the GTX 1650, and currently it costs at least $10 less. The RX 570 does use drastically more power, but I think for most gamers, the extra performance as well as that small cost saving, it'll make up for that. Still, it's interesting to think, had Nvidia delivered a GDDR6 version of the GTX 1650 back in April of last year for $150, I might have actually recommended it over the RX 570, or at the very least could have made an argument for the 1650 as an alternative. Today though, the RX 570 is no longer the 1650's biggest problem. That honor goes to its bigger brother, the GTX 1650 Super. You're faced with having to pay 17% more per frame for the GDDR6 version of the GTX 1650 if you don't want to just pay $10 more for the 1650 Super, which of course also comes armed with 4GB of GDDR6 memory. AMD also has their 4GB version of the RX 5500, which is also better value, but I don't really like the 5500 series for two reasons. Firstly, these budget Navi GPUs just cost too much, and secondly, they're gimped by only using PCIe times 8 rather than times 16 bandwidth. Personally, I'd avoid the 5500 XT and just get a GTX 1650 Super if efficiency is your primary concern. If not, I think spending about $40 more, sometimes less, to get an 8GB RX 580 is probably the way to go. Not long ago, these things were down around $160, and at that price, they were the obvious choice. So if you can get one for that price or very near, that's unquestionably the way to go. Of course, where the GTX 1650 makes some sense, and this new GDDR6 model will be of benefit, is for small form factor PCs, namely those limited to the use of a low profile graphics card. The only problem there though being that even today, very few LP GTX 1650s exist in the wild. Right now on Newegg, for example, the GDDR5 Gigabyte and MSI versions are priced at $210 and $200 respectively, and that's a seriously big premium to pay for what is really a very slow graphics card. I'm of the opinion, whether it be popular or not, it's just my opinion, but I'm of the opinion that if you're really wanting to play games on a small form factor OEM PC, I really think you're just best off buying the bullet and building a proper gaming PC, rather than throwing away $200 US on a graphics card that struggles to deliver 60 FPS at 1080p using dialed down quality settings. I'm sure for a very, very small number of people these cards make sense, but for the vast majority of you they simply won't and there are better options available, like much better options. I'm aware some will argue that the GTX 1650 is useful for OEM PCs that don't have a PCIe power connector and therefore can't power a GTX 1650 Super for example, but in almost all instances there are ways around this such as adapters that can deliver 6-pin PCIe power, or in many instances you can just upgrade the power supply. And yes, that does cost more money, but in terms of cost per frame you'll often come out ahead, or at the very least the massive uplift in performance will justify the small investment. Anyway, let's just wrap this one up. It's still my opinion the GTX 1650 was never a good product, and despite the upgrade to GDDR6 memory, you should avoid it at all costs. Unless of course it costs like $100, then I'd probably grab one then. But anyway, that is going to do it for this one. Like, subscribe, do the youtube -y stuff. Uh, also, we have Patreon. Actually, first we have we have exclusive limited time only merch. Yep, that's it. Uh, Harbour Boxed and Hammer on Box. Two awesome channels. So you can jump over to the link in our video description. Check those out. Available in hoodies and t-shirts in three different colors. So yeah, they're selling very well. So obviously you guys are enjoying the meme merch. Also, yeah, as I said, Patreon, you can check that out. We have our exclusive Discord chat. So the Discord server, you can jump over onto the Harbour Unboxed official server. Tim and myself are active on there and we have an awesome community. There's also the live stream that we do each month for Patreon members. That'll be happening next week. So yeah, you don't want to miss out on that. And we'll talk about be pretty much anything really. A lot of people request we discuss things, there's questions asked, we have a few news topics we talk about. So yeah, that's pretty cool, worth checking out if you're interested in more hardware unboxed content. But anyway, as I said, that is going to do it for this one. So thank you for watching. I'm your host Steve and I'll see you again next time.